Hi, my name is Molly here at OzTrek. Um, I'm here with Kate and Emily, and they are going to chat about life at Monash. Hello, my name is Kate. Um, I'm a fourth year nursing and midwifery student at Monash, um, which means it's my last year, which is crazy. Um, I'm originally from North Carolina in the US, but decided to come over to Australia to see what it would be like. Um, and yeah, it's been really good. Um, definitely one of the most rewarding things um, I've ever done and just getting to experience a culture for four years, um, I think is really I don't know, life changing. It's I, I think it's very different than just um, going and visiting and then, um, yeah, coming back. So it's been really, really rewarding. So I'm going to have a bit of a chat about why I think Melbourne's fantastic, why I think you guys should come. Um, and then also just like where Monash is and all of that also. Um, but yeah, if that's OK, I might share my screen. I have a bit of a PowerPoint with photos to help me explain the Melbourne situation. Okay, so why is Melbourne the best? You can see that I obviously have a bit of bias towards this, um, but yes, it's the best and I'll be explaining why. Um, this first photo here is Flinders Street Station, which is the big train station in the city. It's very grand when you walk up to it, um, but it is um, part of the beautiful public transport system, which if you come to Melbourne, you'll get to know very well. Oh, okay. So I just thought I would include some photos of what Melbourne looks like. Um, so you can see on the left hand side, this is from one of our beautiful parks. We have many parks. The Australians are very good at making parks within cities. So there's parks everywhere. But this is the Royal Botanical Gardens, which is just next to the Arts Centre, which is like off on the side in this photo. And then you can see sort of the CBD in the background. Um, and then on the right side, this is my favourite place probably in all of Melbourne. This is the State um, Library. And I really feel like it looks like it could be in Beauty and the Beast or something. It's absolutely fantastic and you can go in there and study and you just feel like, I don't know, I feel like knowledge goes into your brain easier when you're studying in environments like this. So it's definitely a pro. <laughs> Have you ever been to the state uh, library, Emily? I haven't, which I probably shouldn't admit, but I haven't yet. I drive past <laughs> it all the time now and I'm like, I need to go see it. I feel like it's always the things you drive past that you never actually see. Well, but yes. Especially like when we're not really allowed in anywhere. But now is when I'm like, because I moved and then now that I drive past it, I'm like, that looks so beautiful. So Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as the library's <laughs> open, we'll go. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and just some more some more photos. I don't know if my zoom is in the way. Um, so on the left side, we have the Shrine of Remembrance, which gives you like a really good picture down into Melbourne. So that's sort of um, a walkway that and turns into a street that goes straight into the CBD. Um, and then this is the Yar River on the right, which is, yeah, just flows through the city. And I think it adds you know, a bit of <laughs> a bit of a water moment um, in the city. Um, I don't have much to say about it because it's just nice to look at. But yeah, you know, a bit of um, Melbourne propaganda. Um, I think the biggest draw for me for Melbourne is that it is the coffee capital of the world. Um, and I'm going to say that without, you know, I. I, I don't mean any disrespect to other places that call themselves the coffee capital, but the quality of coffee in Melbourne is definitely unparalleled. Um, you will not come to Melbourne and leave not a coffee. Like, you will leave a coffee snob if you come. Um, there's cafes everywhere. M Melbournians love their coffee. They're well known within Australia for loving their coffee. So, I don't know. That puts it into perspective that this is, yeah, it's just an essential part of the culture. And that also translates to food. Um, Melbourne's super multicultural, so you're going to get a really great selection of food from everywhere in the world, which is amazing. And there's also a really big um, brunch 
draw. So lots of people go out to brunch on the weekend. It's a really big thing. Um, so that's really nice because there's always really cool cafes to try and then you get your coffee again. Um, and there's lots of markets um, in the city where you can go to like food festivals and things like that. Um, like on the bottom right, you can't really see it. You can just see the city in the back, like the buildings in the background. But this is Queen Vic Market and every uh, weekend they're open and they have food there. But then they also have like um, nights where they're open for a more specific food market. Um, and yeah, the food is just good. I can't hype it up enough. Um, not only that, but Melbourne also has a lot of things that go on throughout the year. So I just picked two things. Um, so White Night is a huge night in um, Melbourne where the whole city lights up and they flash these like color presentation things um, on all the buildings in the city and as you can see it draws a lot of people so you just sort of go on a tour of the city to see like what things they're lighting up um, and so yeah I think that's a really exciting thing and usually it happens at the beginning of the year so just at the end of summer so it's still warm outside really nice and then we also have the International Comedy Festival too um, I personally haven't been to the comedy festival but it's definitely on my list to try it happens in town hall and there's like just a slew of comedians who come through um, to participate in it um, and I just think that's it's exciting to be in a city that has so much going on um, not only that a lot of uh, singers when they're touring they'll singers and bands they'll come to Melbourne um, to perform which is great so it's nice to be so close to so many things happening um, and I think that um, coming to Melbourne or coming to Monash really lets you um, experience a lot of I don't know things that you might not get to if you're at other places and here I have photos of the NGV you have to mention um, the National Gallery of Victoria it is the art museum and it has there's a, f a few different museums in Melbourne um, but I think this one's definitely the biggest um, and you can see some of the exhibitions they put on they always have this really big piece of artwork as soon as you walk in the um, the museum um, which is really cool so for the last little bit it's been this moving artwork piece um, which is very mesmerizing honestly when you go and you just stare at it for like 10 minutes because it looks completely different each minute um, but yeah there's lots of really cool um, different art pieces and there's another museum attached to the NGV which is National Gallery of Victoria um, which has specifically um, indigenous art which is really exciting um, to see also because that's uh, something that's you know really unique to Australia Um, oh, my photos haven't loaded. That's okay. Um, I just had more photos of like a train station and a bus, but essentially you get the picture. Um, Melbourne has really good public transport, um, a really good public transport system. So it's easy to get out from the outer suburbs into the city. Um, in the outer suburbs, usually there's a train and buses, um, and then those go all the way into the city. And then the city also has trams. And I think... If I'm not wrong, it has the largest tram system in the world that's still in use. So very exciting. Bit of San Francisco vibes, but Australian style. Um, so yeah, I always feel really exciting, excited, excuse me, getting on a tram. I'm not sure why. I think it's just because we don't really have them. But um, yeah, it's very easy to get around in Melbourne and the city, but um, it's also Maybe not the city so much isn't so car friendly. I definitely know people who do drive in the city, but um, definitely as you're going out into some of the suburbs, um, definitely really car friendly. So if you're very keen to drive, that's also an option. Obviously on the other side of the road though. So, you know, keeping that in mind. Um, and I had to include the beaches because Australia is famous for its beaches, right? But um, I don't know if people really think of Melbourne when they think of beaches, but it's a shame because we have some really beautiful beaches down here. Um, I picked photos personally of places that I live close to because I'm a bit farther down that what we call the peninsula, so a little bit out of the city. Um, so 
yeah, these are, you know, very easy to get to places, but I think it's exciting that Melbourne offers, you know, that city life, but then you can also escape to the beach really easily. Lots of people will go on like day trips down to the beach during summer or during winter. It's a good walking spot. Um, and yeah, it just looks magnificent. So, I mean, why not? Um, I also had to include a bit about sports because, because although I'm not that interested in sports, I imagine other people are. Um, so of course the Australian opens at the bottom. Um, this photo above was the Melbourne cricket, um, grounds. So if you guys want to see that, it's the MCG. Um, but then on the left, I have a photo of footy, which is a really big sport. It's specifically from Victoria. So really big sport in Victoria, um, lots of teams. And I think it's like exciting to go somewhere where it's like, that's the only place that has the sport. Um, but yes, so really big sports in Australia are well, in Mel, uh, I guess Victoria is an easier one for me to explain, but um, our footy, cricket, um, I feel like there was another one I was thinking of mentioning, but, oh, rugby, yeah. Um, so, yes, exciting to go to those and learn a bit more about how those are played, especially footy. I didn't, yeah, so, I don't know, interesting. <laughs> they really get behind it. Um so the flora and the fauna, I'm so disappointed my photos aren't loading, but um, obviously Australia has a lot of really unique creatures like um, kangaroos and koalas and wombats and things like that. Um, so it is really exciting when you get to sort of go out a bit from the city and see some of those animals like in the wild, not in a zoo or anything. Um, and yeah, I don't know, that quality, he's just so cute. And then there's lots of really um, beautiful, excuse me, really beautiful native flowers and birds that would be, I don't know, I think it's interesting to see because it's different than what I am used to growing up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a bit of a draw as well. And then I just wanted to include some photos of sort of around Melbourne so you can get a bit of that vibe. Um, the top photo is, I don't know what they're called. I want to call them carriage houses, but I'm not sure that's actually what they're called. They're like shotgun houses a bit. Um, but yeah, Melbourne's really, um, I, they have a lot of these. I'm not sure, exactly sure what they're called, but I think they're really nice to walk around. And especially in some of the older neighborhoods, you'll see a lot of these Um and I just think it like sort of is nice that there is so something so individualistic um, between uh, Victoria and sort of or Melbourne, excuse me, and the rest of Australia. Um, and then I have the Brighton boxes on the bottom left, which are the bathing boxes. Um, and these are very um, common to go and take Instagram photos in front of. Um, very good spot. And um, there's some down the peninsula also, so closer to those beaches, because um, Brighton's sort of really near the city. Um, so there's some further down also that are colorful and things like that. And then I have a photo of St. Kilda, which has Luna Park, which is the scary guy that you walk through to get to Luna Park. Um, and yeah, St. Kilda is a really gorgeous area. Um, it also has the penguins, which is crazy. So um, there's penguins like in the city and they just like live on this pier. Um, absolutely wild. Um, but yeah, <laughs> really cool to go and see. It's a fun thing to take people to. I've taken my parents there and they're like, oh, wow. Um, I'm not 100% sure how important <laughs> shopping is to you, but I think it's good to know, you know, there are like lots of convenience stores to get to. I've put a photo of um, Chadston, which is actually the largest shopping mall in the Southern Hemisphere. So there's lots of options there um, and does have lots of brands that you would be familiar with from the US. They even have a Krispy Kreme donuts, which is so cool. I don't think I've ever seen a Krispy Kreme Oh, no, there is a shop in the city, actually, now that I'm saying that. Um, but yeah, so really easy place to get a lot of the things you might be used to from home. Um, and, uh, you know, other shops are really easy, like the grocery store, things like that. Everything's pretty similar. They just have different names. Um, 
but yeah I think it still sort of has that same convenient aspect of what home feels like but you know you're in another country exciting and this photo is some of the hiking spots around Victoria. So um, I think we're really fortunate in Victoria. We have, you know, definitely some arid places, but then we have some really green place, really green tropical places. So the bottom right is a hiking spot. I think it's near the Great Ocean Road, um, which is really beautiful. Um, definitely should look up the Great Ocean Road if you uh, don't know what that looks like yet. Um, and then the other photos we have are of Wilson's Prom, which is a, um, yeah, a really cool hiking national park. Um, and people go down there for, you know, summer during, like for a week or so, and they go camping and hiking around. Um, so yeah, a really nice area. And I mean, those beaches, so beautiful. Oh, that might be my last one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, you know, in summary, there's lots of things to do. You can go surfing. There's, you know, lots of surfers, um, lots of things to do to keep you entertained in the city and things like that. Um, but yeah, essentially, it's one, a wonderful place to be. Um, Monash is really fortunate to have quite a few different campuses. So you have some that are closer to spots like the top uh, photo here is closer to the beach so the, that's the campus I'm at um, but there's some that are you know in the city really close to everything that's happening and then we have our really big uh, campus too that feels a lot more like what you would expect um, in the uh, US or Canada where it's just like a big university lots of um, people and everything like that so you sort of get the best of every world I guess you can sort of pick what um, environment you'd like um, some courses are dependent on which campuses you'd be at um, but in general um, yeah it's really cool to sort of have lots of different options on locations and things like that um, but yes I think that was everything I wanted to chat through with um, the PowerPoint Emily did you have anything that you wanted to mention with that no but this looks absolutely beautiful now I want to go I want to go hiking it's only what 9 a.m here <laughs> <laughs> like let's go do something I know I'm like literally counting down the days I'll have placement for the next little bit but I'm counting down the days until I'm done with it so I can go hiking I'm so keen yeah, it looks awesome thank you so much yeah that was great I'm definitely like feeling the travel bug now looking at all of this <laughs> <laughs> Please okay come. thank it's you so yeah <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And that was an awesome presentation. Um, we really appreciate it. So for anyone still here, um, head back to the Career Echo Fair. Um, and again, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Bye. Bye, everyone.